Good afternoon. I am Udo Sektem from Stuttgart in Germany, and I have the pleasure to interview Professor Jerome Bax from Leiden in the Netherlands. He, until well now, uh, has been the chairperson of the Committee for Practice Guidelines of the ESC. And um, we are going to talk a little bit, Jerome, about um, the development of the ESC guidelines, which is, in fact, a very interactive process. And uh, there are some new things that have been introduced over the past year. Could you comment on that, perhaps? Absolutely, Udo. And I think uh, the first new thing that was introduced is uh, that we uh, almost co-chaired the whole thing. We had a weekly conference call going over all the uh, needed things and so that gave us the opportunity to really steer this in an excellent direction so that we respected the timelines, we tackled all the problems in time. So I think that was the first really new thing, the introduction of weekly calls which costed us a lot of time but also yielded in a lot of results. The other new things that were introduced is that we spread the guidelines over the year. So as you recall, this year we had heart failure uh, guideline and the prevention guideline uh, published and released a bit earlier than just before the ESC. And that has advantages because we can present then these guidelines at the subspecialty meetings, as was the case this year. So prevention and heart failure were presented at the subspecialty meetings and also available at an earlier stage. What else was new? Well, we had aimed at uh, using two uh, coordinator chairs of the task forces and that makes possible with this more complex document to div divide a bit the work because it's a lot of work for a task force chair. And we did the same for the review process. We introduced actually two review coordinators uh, coordinating this, uh, this review. So distribution of the work and staging over the year, I think that were the real novelties of this year. Well, it sounds all pretty straightforward, what you tell me, um, but there must have been also some challenges in the process. There were a lot of challenges, and uh, I think the biggest challenge for the task force chairs, for us as running this committee, and for the entire committee and also for the ESC team is that the guidelines are becoming more and more complex and on the other hand you want to keep them simple so that they're easy to use in the daily practice and that the daily practicing cardiologist can work with them. So to find the balance between including all the new details and still keeping them simple and easy to work with I think that's one of the biggest challenges. Also to maintain the timelines and to work for um, specifically the task force with all these reviewer comments coming in, these are big challenges that we had to face. But coming back to the success story, I, I think um, even from uh, beyond the big pond, we had some positive responses about the um, size and uh, the, the way that the guidelines were shaped by the ESC. Absolutely. I think we have uh, received uh, quite some success, some good success, because um, they were indeed short and easy to follow. We have the same template, the tables look the same, color codings were introduced, and that makes them easier to, in a quick minute, look at them and interpret them. Finally, let us have a glimpse at the future of the EAC guidelines, please. So what is there to come for the next year? So I think for the next year we have four guidelines uh, being prepared and they are including very relevant topics like diabetes, hypertension, cardiac pacing and uh, one that is also really important is stable coronary artery disease. So really clinically relevant topics on, um, for a daily practice. These are the ones to come, all to come in 2013. And um, I think the last uh, important change is going to be that uh, Dr. Pepe Zamorano is going to head up the committee for the next two years and maybe beyond that. One factor of stability will of course be the Hart House team headed by Veronica Dean and we want to thank her also again for really doing that work with us. Well, um, I have to thank you. It has been a great pleasure to work with you and I think you did a wonderful job in um, bringing the guidelines of the ESC forward. And uh, this concludes our interview. I would like to thank Professor Jerome Bax for having time for us. Thank you. Thank you.